If you've been on the internet in the last few months, you know that Squid Game Season 2 has just released. And if you've also been updated in the editing space in those last few months too, you've probably also seen like 26 of these edits. Of a character which nobody even knows what his name is, it still has like 3rd or 2nd place on the show's org. And a lot of you are probably wondering, man, this is such a basic edit, yet it gets so much views and likes. I mean, it's not like I can even make it, but- Whoa, whoa, stop right there, buddy. Today, I went ahead and broke down on how I made the salesman edit, which performed like this on shorts, and performed like this on TikTok. I, I I don't know how this is performing as of recording, so if it flopped, that's 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 just embarrassing. In this video, like I said, I'll be walking you through in detail and how I made this edit. There's no reason. You've seen this in the movies, I'm sure. We're rushing roulette. I take a single bullet, load it into this revolver in a spin. Then I aim at the loser's head and get the trigger. I'll explain on how I got my scenes, on how I got my edit audio. I'll also break down all the effects and transitions into simple steps where you can either remake this edit too, or heck, maybe even just save the presets for another edit. Because as much as you hate to admit it, you're on free. Now I will just say, if you don't know how to do a particular thing in this tutorial, or if I'm moving too fast, I'll put a video card for an in-depth tutorial on that specific thing. But if there isn't one and you're really struggling on the specific thing, feel free to comment it below and I'll try my best to get back to you or even just make a tutorial on it. Before I start with this edit, I need to find a scene pack, because I've never really edited this character before. So after a bit of digging, I successfully found a pretty good scene pack on Instagram of the salesman from season 2. I personally watched the show in Korean because the dub is kind of like, uh, But for the sake of editing, I just went ahead and chose the English version, since editing-wise, I personally think it's more convenient. I know a lot of you guys also struggle to find scene packs, so I put the link for the same one that I used in my Discord server. And because I'm using this scene pack and it's not mine, here's credits to the original creator. Next, I needed to find my edit audio that I wanted to use. So I went ahead and made this quick edit audio of that one song everybody's been editing the salesman to. And if you want to use that same one too, it's also in my Discord server. Now once I had these essentials ready, I opened up After Effects and imported the audio and the scene. I started by choosing what clip I wanted to use for my intro. I didn't really stress it, I just chose the scene of those two guys who worked for Gihun, finally seeing the salesman for the first time in that subway. I wanted to make the beat drop of them shocked because it seemed to suit it pretty well. So I went ahead and just cut up the scene and just threw it into my intro. I wasn't trying to organize anything yet, I just wanted to collect clips for now. I then started marking beats, which honestly, there wasn't as much as I thought there would be. But then again, I only really marked up half of the audio. My excuse for that was because this is gonna be one of those parallel transition edits. And off the top of my head, I only really had maybe two or three examples I could use at max. And as much as I hate doing this, I'm just gonna repeat the edit twice. So speaking of clips, what I did next is cut up some scenes. I had about 12 or 13 beats marked, meaning I didn't really need that much scenes. But yeah, no, I spent like 20 minutes cutting up like 40. Minutes. After I had organized all of it, I realized that my After Effects was getting really laggy. Either because the clips were in such high quality to the point my PC just couldn't handle it, or my laptop was down bad and became a sin. Whatever that case was, I just played the clips over and let it cache so it would run smoother, meaning I would just let it play completely so it could load it all through, and so my laptop could digest what's happening. I looked carefully for scenes that I could do really smooth transitions between. A good example that was previously trending and people still do to this day is some Breaking Bad edits of mainly Walter White, but I think I could recall of seeing a couple of Gus Fring edits too. The idea being is that we need transitions as smooth as possible. I found two revolver clips, so I could use those to transition the first couple beats, which honestly, it wasn't perfect perfect, but then again, it was like the same scene at different places, so it kind of clicked. After that, I put a scene which I was going to make an overlay pop transition to later and on, and now realizing it, this edit is going to have some similar transitions to the Life Force style edits. And if that trend wasn't dead, I probably would have made a tutorial on it. I then put another set of transitionable scenes, then a couple of filler scenes, which still in my opinion look dope, and then lastly, in the end, two more transitionable scenes. And I did have to reverse one of the clips because the scene was like, he was having people choose between the bread and the lottery. One clip was of him bringing his hands down and the other one he was bringing it up. But it was still like different scenes and they still kind of clicked, so I just reversed the second clip. And if you don't know how to do that, I just right clicked, time, time reverse layer. I then further adjusted it around to make the transition smoother. Once I was happy with the clip placement, I went ahead and scaled them and positioned them around so they were well centrally placed. Now as I was doing that, I decided to add a voiceover to play in the background. Which the honestly, I think it will just keep the viewer engaged and even further up the quality of the I made the Spider-Man Homecoming no, no, I'm more of an Andrew person. So there's a clip where the salesman is talking about how to play Russian roulette, which is one of the most badass yet iconic scenes of the sales. The way how I did it is I just grabbed
grabbed the clip where he was talking about how to play the game. Then I clicked on this little eyeball thingy here, so now it was just the audio. Then I extended it out for the entire time he was talking about how to play the game. Then from here, I double clicked L to see the wave levels. Then I cut them out accordingly to when he's only talking and the parts that I only Then wanted. from here, I moved the audio around to a line, so there wouldn't be any awkward silent gaps. Once I was happy with the way it sounded, I just went ahead and pre-composed all the voiceovers, so it wouldn't look so messy. I also went ahead and messed around with the edit audio and the voiceover audio, just so they would sound evenly. I also went up here to use this audio panel to measure my audio, just so I can make sure the audio isn't fast boosted or it isn't just way too quiet. In my opinion, I just like to keep it right about here. After that, I added a couple of other little adjustments and oh my god, look how smooth that is. I was debating on whether or not to add face tracking to these clips, but at some point I decided not to, since I think this style would look better without it. From here, what I did was pre-compose all of the edit clips and was ready to get started with the effects. What I wanted was basic zoom ins and zoom outs with Twixter for every other clip. So I started by adding Twixter to my first clip and I changed around certain settings to match my preference. I put the speed at about 150 for the start keyframe, 50 for the mid keyframe, and 150 again at the end keyframe. And then with this graph to make it look smoother. Then I added S underscore bloom recruit and made a really basic zoom. The start keyframe being at 1.1 and the end keyframe being at 0.8. With a really basic graph. I also moved the anchor point for this effect just right in the character's face just so it would zoom in like directly at them. Then I copied all the effects, pasted it onto the next clip, but I modified it so it would be a zoom out. It's basically the same except the zoom keyframes were just reversed. So from here I copied and pasted all the zooms. It would go in the order where it would zoom in and then it would zoom and out. And then at the end I made the last two clips zoom in because they were like transitioning and it looked better. Now I have the solid base of my edit done with. Now it's time to get serious with the effects. So I started by first making this halftone shake transition, which obviously wasn't too hard. To do so, I made an adjustment layer so it last between the two clips I wanted to transition. And then added a S underscore shake to it. From here I enabled motion blur. Then I went right in between both of the clips, which I turned up to a number I can't say because I kept changing it. But I just turned it up to whatever looked best. Not too strong or not too low. Then at the start and the end of that adjustment layer, I turned the amplitude back down to zero. From here I messed around with the keyframes and the graph. And played around with the S underscore shakes value. From here I added the S underscore half tone effect to the adjustment layer. I mainly just messed with the dots frequency and the dots lighten until I liked it. But for some reason it wasn't looking the way I wanted it. The S underscore shake effect just messing so it up. So what I did is I duplicated the adjustment layer, deleted the S underscore shake on the new one, and deleted the halftone effect on the old one. And in result, it looked way better. Next, what I did was add some of my own personal shake presets to a couple of the clips. So I have made some other shake tutorials in the past, so if you don't have any and you need some, feel free to check those out. But for these specific ones I usually use, I don't have them anywhere else, so I might just end up putting them on my editing store with all my other high quality presets. After that, I duplicated the halftone shake adjustment layers we made earlier. So of other clips I wanted to transition, and now I wanted to make this transition of the character sort of popping in. It was simple to say for the least. So what I started by doing is just cutting the first frame of the clip. It specifically had to be the first frame, no longer. Then I had to freeze frame on that exact frame. Then what I just did was copy that, and then click Control Z a few times, so it was back to the original clip, as if I never cut it. And then what I did was click Control V to paste it back. I pre-composed it, and then went into that pre cut And then from there, I used the roller brush tool to mask out the character. After I was happy with how it looked, I was supposed to click on this freeze button, Thingy. But what I did, as you can see, just never worked. And I just did not feel like troubleshooting it, so I didn't freeze it. And you're supposed to freeze it so it holds the mask and it stays there, so After Effects doesn't just automatically readjust it. But like, I decided to risk it, because like, what are you gonna do about it? Then I went back to my main comp and freeze frame that pre comp again. Then I extended it to the length I wanted it to be, which obviously was very short. Then I made a basic up to down overlay transition with the position keyframes. And I made a smooth graph that I was happy with, to say for the least. And just so it will pop out a bit more, I added a little black and white effect to the open. I then did that entire process again, but with this clip, and instead of doing an up to down position animation, I did a scale one instead. Instead of adding a black and white effect, I used S underscore halftone. So this just makes it feel less repetitive, and honestly, I think it looks From here to wrap it up, I added a little black and white ghost effect for the first clip, which obviously is very simple. And once I was happy with this sector of the edit, I pre-composed all of that we just worked on, and then I duplicated it for the second part of the audio. And I'm gonna admit, it came out a little offbeat on certain parts, but honestly, it was fine. Next from here, it was finally time to start on this intro. It wasn't gonna be a big deal because I wanted to keep it simple. So I just zoomed in the clips and adjust them accordingly. I added a couple of position keyframes to go from one guy to the other so the viewer could understand what's going on. Since I couldn't fit both of them into the frame. And then added some basic face tracking to the scene where the salesman was slapping the crap out of Mr. Bitcoin. And I will just say hey, that was a pain because there wasn't really any good tracking points. But like after 10 minutes of straight hell, I got it done. I then pre-composed the entire intro completely and added my clear CC 
key to the intro, which you can find in the description. And I added some light flicker. After I did that, I pre-composed the entire intro again. And I decided to do this last minute little effect. Where it would zoom in on beat and it would go like black and white. And obviously it was really simple. All I did was I cut the intro on the beat. Just by listening to it, it wasn't necessary to mark the beats. After I did that, I zoomed each one in a little bit more after the other. And I added a little black and white effect to two of the clips. And then on the last clip, I just made a little fade out opacity animation so it could transition into the end. Now finally, I added my realism CC to the actual edit part. This CC isn't out yet on my store as of recording, but it is coming soon. And when it does, I'll have a huge 10 days. So keep your eyes peeled for and that. And then I added a little basic panning on the edit set. And now it was time to pre-compose everything. I added my iconic ugly all watermark. Finally, I set it to render. You just watched me make that two hour edit in about 10 minutes. Which honestly, I love how it came out. I just went ahead and posted it on my old TikTok account, which is where I post my edits that aren't related to my main. We'll see how that's performing. Because honestly, I don't really know. So I'll put that in the pinned comment as long as the YouTube shorts one that I posted to this channel. If you want to see another edit breakdown like this, then go check out my school edit tutorial, where I broke down how I made that edit step by step.